What is up, guys? So in this video, we're going to be starting off my review of the Surviving Jeffrey Epstein documentary, which dropped, I believe, last month. Now, I promised about three, four weeks ago to watch this and do a review for you guys. And that's exactly what I'm getting to finally. Now, a lot of things have happened in the interlude in the Ghislaine Maxwell case and now recently with the Virgin Islands and Jeffrey Epstein's case. So a lot of things have gone on. So it's taken me a while to get here. But nevertheless, I am here. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be playing you guys the audio of the parts that I thought were the most interesting. And I'm going to be doing a bit of analysis and breakdown of these parts that I thought were really interesting or revelatory or in some other way worthy of coverage. So that's what we're going to be doing. So part one of this documentary was probably my favorite and part four was my second favorite. But part one, especially this part, addressed the socioeconomic status of the victims and why their poverty is what actually led them to be victimized by Jeffrey Epstein. So that's what we're going to be looking at first in this section. So let's get started. Palm Beach is a very interesting place. You have a very wealthy segment of the population, one of the wealthiest in the United States. And by Palm Beach, what I'm talking about is the island. And the island is very different than the mainland. So you go from millionaire and billionaire row on the island to then a little further west, which is more middle class, to then even further west, which is a much lower socioeconomic group living out in the Western communities. This was the pool of young girls that he preyed upon the most. If you approach a 14, 15 year old private school girl that has a Gucci handbag and she hears about some old guy that wants a massage for a couple hundred dollars, they're not going to respond to that. Take that same proposition to a young girl that's barely getting by. That's a different proposition. The easiest prey is the weakest in the group. And that was his method. That was his modus operandi. So what this guy laid out here is the reason that I even started covering this Jeffrey Epstein story. Because Jeffrey Epstein's story is not just a story about pedophilia. It's about a critique of our capitalist system. Why did Jeffrey Epstein, of all the pedophiles in the world, why was he able to build this pyramid? Well, it was because he was wealthy. And the capitalist mindset, capitalism is not just an economic system. It is a way of thinking. Capitalism is the bastard child of mercantilism and feudalism, one of the greatest evils that have ever existed in Europe. And as, as a proud European, I am disgusted by the suffering that feudalism and mercantilism brought upon my kin. And capitalism is doing the same thing to our children now. Make no mistake, capitalism is the reason that Jeffrey Epstein got as far as he did. Without the market worship and the worship of the billionaire class, none of this would have happened. You know what happens to regular pedophiles? They get caught after one or two of their crimes and they go to jail. What happened to Jeffrey Epstein? Everybody bowed down to this guy because of his billions of dollars, because of all the connections he had to Bill Clinton and Donald Trump, Jean-Luc Brunel and Ghislaine Maxwell and Prince Andrew, all these rich, wealthy assholes. All of them let him get away. So the capitalist mindset of bowing down to the rich and worshiping the rich and pretending like poor people are defective and rich people are morally superior and their lives were, are worth more. These are all the unspoken rules of capitalism that rich people's lives are more important than that of the poor. That is the primary reason that Jeffrey Epstein was able to get away with all the things that he did. And that is why I despise this system. It is a threat to our children. It is a threat to our world. It will consume everything in its path to make the most money. There's a saying, Shirley, perhaps you've heard it. All it takes for evil to succeed is for good people to say, it's a business. For quarterly profits, that is the point of capitalism. Make money for a small number of people while destroying the planet while victimizing children and destroy everything that is worth living for. These people worship only one God. It is the green God that they worship and they are immoral to their core, these wealthy capitalists. I'm concerned George and Georgie might be succumbing to the sin of greed. Ooh, that's a biggie. Ever since Georgie started making money, he's been very disrespectful. Meanwhile, my husband's so busy trying to land a better job, he doesn't even care how it might affect Sheldon. I'm sorry to hear that. In Luke 12, 15, Jesus says, watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. I know, but it seems like the whole world is sending the opposite message. Don't I know it. 
and Epstein got away with everything he did because of this system that we have set up. It is our job and our moral obligation to destroy this system and set up a system that focuses on preserving the safety of human beings first, not GDP, not maximizing GDP, not expanding market share, but making sure that human beings can live dignified lives without having to sell their bodies and not have to resort to all kinds of other demeaning means of making money as these girls had to do. These girls went because they were so poor and they needed $200. $200 for a massage seemed like a good deal. To embarrass themselves, to have themselves groped, that was a deal they were making, uh, willing to make because the system had failed them so much that their family structure had fallen apart because of poverty. They lived in a place that they didn't see a way out of. So this rich guy invites him into their house and decide and says he's going to pay him 200 bucks. They took it. Now, of course, the immoral people will blame the girls instead of blaming the system. Those are people that will never fix anything because they refuse to admit that there's a problem with capitalism. They are too afraid and brainwashed by 1970s propaganda about the Soviet Union. So they will never, ever critique capitalism, even if it rapes their own children. I am not one of these people, and I hope you aren't either. So that was a giant rant, but nevertheless, that is what I believe. Well, if it's everywhere, how can we fight it? We may not be able to control the world, but we can control our homes. It's up to us to create an environment where the sin of greed can find no purchase. So with that fierce rant being in tow, we are moving on to the second part. Now, this is the second thing that I found interesting in part one. It has to do with the Detective Rickery from the Miami Police Department. And I want to play this for you guys because this is original video footage or audio in this case of the detective talking to some of the victims and asking them questions about the nature of the abuse that went on here. And I thought this was worth listening to. So let's... We start hearing these unbelievable stories of numbers and numbers of young girls from her high school that had gone over there. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I hope you got it. Yeah. 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 And initially, we say, this is too gruesome and too awful to be even true or close to the truth. Tell me from the beginning how you met this gentleman. Um, through a friend. What is it that you were told you would have to do? Give him a massage. At any point, did he ask you to remove your clothes? Yeah. Did he touch your breasts? Yes. Did he touch your vaginal area? Yeah. And did you have intercourse with him? Almost every single one of the young girls were in high school. And most of them were under the age of 18, some as young as 14. I was unaware that I was going to be alone with him for that 10 minutes, and I thought I was going to die. All of these young girls were children, and a lot of them weren't afraid. Just take a deep breath. I'm trying. You're not the only person that he's done this to. Okay. Okay. I've talked to a lot of girls, mm -hmm. almost 40 girls. As we learn more and more about the case and the breadth of it, it goes from, I can't believe this as an attorney, to, oh my God, I can't believe this is actually happening. So hearing that, the first time I heard that was back in the first documentary. They had a section of that, although in this documentary, they played more of the videos of the original minor girls. Every single, every single girl that you heard was under the age of 18 in this, under the age of 17 in most cases. These girls were 13, 14, 15, and 16, okay? So every single audio clip that you just heard was a minor female talking to Detective Rickery, and I appreciate how he was trying to console them because they were clearly disturbed. They didn't actually want to be there. A lot of the girls didn't, didn't actually come to the police station. There are hundreds of victims who haven't come forward because they, they don't want to go against Epstein. Why? Because he's a rich capitalist. And they don't want to mess with him because he knows that because they know that money equals power and that he can destroy their lives. When you give a couple of rich guys this much power, just like the kings of England, they're going to rape a lot of girls, including minor children. That's what's going to happen. Some of these rich guys are going to be pedophiles. If you give them the money and the power, they're going to take advantage of it. They're going to use it and they're going to do horrible things to women and horrible things to children. That is an inevitable result of a system that gives money and power and influence to a small number of rich people. That is what it leads to. And capitalism is tailor-made to make these vile, disgusting people the most powerful people in our country, which is why we need to get rid of this system. Missy, 
Let this be a lesson to you. The love of money is the root of all evil. Hey! All right, moving right along to the third thing that I found interesting. So this, the third thing has to do with how did Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein first meet? Now, of course, we don't know the exact answer, but they had some interesting commentary regarding this question, and I wanted to share this with you guys. She is the youngest daughter of uh, Robert Maxwell, who was a British newspaper tycoon. Ghislaine was doted on by her father, and he named his yacht Lady Ghislaine after her. But in 1991, Robert Maxwell was sailing around the Canary Islands, died in mysterious circumstances. When he died, we learned that he'd been stealing from the pension funds of his workers. Hundreds of working class people lose their retirement income because of Maxwell's financial fraud. Suddenly, all the money had vanished. Her family were plagued by scandal. They were hated in the UK. So under this huge cloud, Galen moves to America. Lots of people are still trying to figure out how Galen and Jeffrey met. I wish I knew, but it just seemed like Jeffrey had very quickly taken the place of her father. At the time, Epstein was on the rise. Galen's kind of on the way down, and they meet in the middle. Both of them had something that the other one desperately needed. He was her boyfriend, but she was also his gal Friday. She leapt to the occasion when there was anything that he needed that she could provide. And she hugely expanded Jeffrey's social universe. She opened doors for him to people like the Clintons, to Prince Andrew. You know, she introduced him to high society. He was starting to get the money, but he didn't have the finesse, the class. And that's what Galen gave him. You would agree, would you not? that Ghislaine Maxwell <coughs> shares your sexual obsession for underage minor females. Argumentative, speculation. Ghislaine Maxwell was intricately involved with Jeffrey Epstein. The two of them created this world that allowed Jeffrey Epstein to abuse so many young women. So obviously there's no answer to the question about exactly when they met but it seems their explanation here is what what actually happened because Gillian Maxwell has been a loser her whole life okay she didn't do anything of value in Britain she was a loser a daddy's girl she was just a sh she had a sugar daddy uh, her actual daddy and after her actual daddy died she was she needed another sugar daddy and that's the reason that she got with Epstein and he she saw that he had all this money and that she could do something for him which is to satisfy his um, you know, need. And of course, we all know what the sick attraction that Jeffrey Epstein had. And Gillian Maxwell had the ability to provide it. She represented a mother figure to these girls who wanted, who had family problems, first of all, had financial problems on top of that. Most of them had dreams to become massage therapists. That's another thing that this documentary makes clear. So there were it, it was a it was a perfect storm of a lot of circumstances that led to them working together perfectly and also to victimizing all these girls. So Gillian Maxwell is not some you know master mastermind Mossad spy like some people like to pretend, and they have, they of course have no evidence to prove that she was a spy just because her daddy did some jobs for um, Mossad and that Netanyahu knew him. That doesn't prove anything. Uh, just because your father did something doesn't mean that you are also doing it. So citations needed on that ridiculous claim but nevertheless Gillian Maxwell came to America at the same time that Jeffrey Epstein was looking to get into all these high rolling clubs in New York and she provided him the the facade of high society that's what she had with the English accent the English accent takes you a long way because for whatever reason Americans are so impressed by it and for that reason it gives you access and if you're dressed nice and you look like you're rich as Ghislaine Maxwell did, then looks are half the game, more than half the game. You can, if you can get in the door and you can, you're good at talking to people. And Ghislaine Maxwell, I'll give her that. She's a loser on everything else. She's never had a marketable skin or skill in her life, but she's good at talking to people and fooling people and tricking people into thinking that she's trustworthy. That's what she did for Epstein to get all these rich people into his parties, and that's what she did for him with all these girls, pretending to be a caring mother figure. So in this next section, Sigrid McCauley, who is one of the lawyers for Virginia Roberts, makes the case regarding the shipping packages that came to Jeffrey Epstein's house. And these packages corroborate some of the peculiar interests that some of the victims of Jeffrey Epstein have accused him of having. 
So let's take a look at this. Uh, they start off by giving the gentleman a massage, and he pays them. He basically does this with a lot of teenage girls. These are very serious charges. The first official complaint was in um, 2005. And she told me that all I had to do was give him a massage, and he would give me $200. Once the police started uncovering the number of young girls that were involved in this network, the investigation snowballed. They put him under surveillance, watching his house, seeing girls going in and out. They execute a search warrant on the home, even did a trash pull to investigate what was being thrown out. The shocking thing was the amount of evidence, things like Amazon, receipts for books about sex slavery, flight logs, message pads that had message after message of little girl calling in, I can bring this friend tonight for a massage. I can't go because my grandpa has a birthday. Things that shock the conscience. What you had in this investigation was a rock-solid, prosecutable case against a serial sexual predator. So as for this shipping label evidence and the evidence that they talked about there, I'm going to be going into that in my next part, part five of the, my, of the series that I'm doing called The Undisputed Evidence Against Ghislaine Maxwell. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. And I have a playlist, which I'll link in the top right hand corner of this video, which and you guys can go check those videos out. Now, in the next section, uh, in the next uh, video of that series, we're going to be covering some of the physical evidence like the flight logs and um, the shipping labels and the book titles that we just spoke about here that Sigrid McCauley just spoke about here. So make sure you guys catch that video in the future. So the next part of this video was the best part of this video because I have been screaming since I first started talking about this case. The most guilty person here is not Alex Acosta. It's freaking Barry Krischer. Barry Krischer, who was the AG for that county, made sure that Jeffrey Epstein was going to go free with no penalties. Not kidding. He, Alex Acosta at least got that ridiculous deal, right? I mean, the deal was terrible, but it was better than nothing. And it actually registered him as a sexual offender. But Barry Krischer was going to do even less. He was going to do literally nothing, literally nothing. Okay. Barry Krischer was going to let Jeffrey Epstein walk because despite the mountains of evidence that was collected by the Miami Police Department, what Barry Krischer did here was he sided with the rich guy just because he was rich. This is the infection of capitalist greed that I always talk about. Rich people are automatically seen as morally pure, even though they are the most impure. But nevertheless, they're the ones who are seen as the clean, right one. So this guy, Barry Krischer, decided because Epstein was a rich billionaire, that he was going to side against the girls, despite the fact that the Miami Police Department, Detective Riccari and his team had done an excellent job of uh, gathering all kinds of incriminating evidence against Jeffrey Epstein. But nevertheless, the this uh, Barry Krischer guy, this morally reprehensible, disgusting person, decided not to do anything to go after Jeffrey Epstein. Do you guys don't believe me? Take a look at this. What went wrong with this case is that Barry Krischer, the state attorney for, for Palm Beach County, essentially just didn't believe the victims. Barry Krischer seems to have said to himself, I believe the rich guy who lives in Palm Beach instead. The Palm Beach police chief protested vigorously when the state attorney's office, citing racy suggestive websites created by some of the girls, charged Epstein with a misdemeanor of solicitation of prostitution. The case, however, did not go away. It was referred to the FBI. So it then, at that point, becomes a federal investigation. I was so confused on what was happening. The feds are coming to my house. They're knocking on my door. They're showing up at my job. They're like being super aggressive. I don't really know what to think because by this time I'm 18, I'm like, am I going to go to prison for this? I'm just trying to duck and dodge them. I don't even want to talk to them. So they end up dropping like papers off on my front doorstep. And it turns out it's all the victim's reports So the first time they went to Jeffrey's house and what happened and how they felt. It immediately brings me back to the first time I went to Jeffrey's. And it was like a flashback. If I could describe how I felt and everything that happened the first time I went, it was this paper that I didn't write, somebody else did. And then I start looking through the box and I see all these names of like girls that I personally brought to him. And it was just devastating. For two days, I think I just stayed in my house and cried about it. For anybody that I recruited, like, I'm so sorry. 
the guilt and shame and how I feel about, basically I lied to them and lured them in to go see this guy. I don't know if it's something that I'll ever really fully get over. So there you go. I included a little bit extra there of um, Courtney Wilde talking about her guilt because she herself acted as a procurer because that's what Jeffrey Epstein did. Um, he made the girls bring in other girls. But anyways, we already know all of that. So Barry Krischer is the main villain here. And I don't know why the FBI hasn't brought that brought that guy in to for questioning. Why did you why did you do that? We, we should look into what who called this guy who called Barry Krischer to tell him not to investigate Jeffrey Epstein, even though the Miami Police Department had solid evidence of this guy sexually molesting 15, 16, 14 year old girls. But nevertheless, Barry Krischer decided I'm going to side with the rich capitalists because that's what capitalism is all about. Rich people are always right. Poor people are disgusting and we're going to side with the rich people. That's what the capitalist mindset does. It's not just about markets. It's not about free markets. It's about worshiping the rich. It's not money itself that's evil. We all need some kind of currency, but it's the power and influence that comes with a lot of money, way too much money. That's what the capitalist system allows people to get. Way too much money that they don't need. And guess what the people, the oligarchs who have it are going to do? They're going to use it to make sure that they get what they want. And if, if a rich guy happens to be a pedophile like Jeffrey Epstein and is attracted to young girls, guess what he's going to get? Young girls. Do you guys see why we shouldn't set up a system like that where a couple of fucking guys have way too much money and way too much power? Because this is what it leads to. A giant pyramid scheme of child molestation. So congratulations, capitalism is awesome. Right? No. Wrong. So that's all I got to say for this video. As you guys can tell, I'm getting very frustrated because I despise this vile system. It is no different from the feudalist system, which allowed the kings of England to rape working class girls. It's the same exact system. Epstein is the new king of England, and he has done exactly what the kings of England used to do to the peasant girls. <laughs> So with that being said, I'll see you guys in the second part of this review where I'll be reviewing episode two of this series called Surviving Jeffrey Epstein. As always, peace. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end guys. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch and consider some of the ideas I present in my videos. If you appreciate my evidence-based, non-partisan approach to reporting legal and political news, please consider supporting me on Patreon. My long-term goal on this channel is to get to a point where I can do news analysis full-time. Grassroots funding is the best way for independent news reporters to remain uncorrupted by corporate influences. Even if you can only afford $1 a month, those dollars add up in the aggregate, and it will be much appreciated by me. With that being said, I'll see you guys in my next video. As always, peace.